uh, the, eventually the music will stop. It, that's a fact. Okay, it's happened to me uh, during the internet craze, during the bottoming effect of 2009, and it happened to me in 2020. Eventually, you're going to run into a euphoric, uh, solid wall. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing great. Hope everybody had a great uh, day of trading. Hope everybody's just having a great life and that's the most important thing. Uh, if you are brand new here, welcome aboard. Uh, we would like to invite you uh, to like, share, subscribe so you can be part of the daily journey of the wonderful world of pivots and via technical analysis. So let me know if you heard this before. The market is strong, right? That's the end of the video. Have a great night. See you tomorrow. Realistically, that's what it is. Uh, but we have a little bit of things to talk about uh, prior to that. Uh, CPI came out today. Uh, the market liked the inflation numbers. Uh, they liked it so much that the S&P uh, and the NASDAQ have finished at a 13-month high. That's right. To, to, to 2022 seemed like it was the end of the world. The NASDAQ was down 31%. What's going to change? The market's going to a deep recession, allegedly, right? Uh, we're going to go into depression. The world is over. And there might be another pandemic. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Here we go. Here we go. Yada, yada, yada. 13-month highs. And the question is, how long can this market sustain this rally? Uh, again, if you've been watching this broadcast, especially for the last three weeks, all I keep on saying is realistically, like every day or every other day, just give us one more day. Just give us one more day. Just just give us one more day, right? Because again, it, it's such an incredible magic carpet ride. And the aggression and the exaggeration in some of these moves are phenomenal. And, and the recipe continues to be the same thing. The daily chart comes along. There's massive, uh, deep, out-of-the-money call, short-term expiration buying. The fuse is lit. And then the stock absolutely explodes. Uh, we'll get to uh, the pivots uh, in a second. Tomorrow, we have uh, the Fed, okay? I, again, uh, there's the, the medium consensus is they're going to leave rates unchanged at least for one, uh, for one uh, session. We'll see how the market reacts to that. But the market continues to just go absolutely nuts. There's a rotation. Uh, doesn't make a difference what it is. When stocks are coming out of the range, they continue just to go absolutely nuts. Uh, pre-market today, uh, you know, pre-market, the first thing I woke up, I was up, you know, 4.30 in the morning. Uh, the, the one, it's like the gift and the curse. You know, I've been up, you know, pretty much five, you know, 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning just because of these overnights. You're getting the most, you know, sometimes you get the most exaggerated prices. So my sleep habits have been hell, but, you know, the action is so aggressive. So, you know, last night uh, came in some uh, Intel, came in some uh, Amazon uh, this morning, I woke up 4.30 in the morning. Everything was gapping up again uh, ahead of the CPI number. And I said, hey, basically, guys, sell 90% of your Intel, uh, Amazon, or anything else. Anything else that you're long uh, at the open. Biggest challenge now is to find value at the rest of the day. And that's exactly what we did. We actually found a lot of value. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll, talk about, uh, we'll talk about the individual uh, pivots in a second. But it, it is a broken record. And again, sometimes... You say to yourself, well, you know, how long is this going to last? Is this going to be forever? And, and I promise you, I give you my word, the, the biggest euphoric markets uh, I've traded, the internet craze, uh, the 2009 bottom, generational bottom, uh, the 2020 pandemic run, it all ends. It does. And it doesn't mean it ends, goes into a bat bear market, and we're going to be in a bear market for the next five years. All it just means it's going to slow down, okay? It's going to slow down. And uh, you're going to run into cycles of normality. And basically what that means is instead of NVIDIA putting up an $11 candle, maybe puts up just a $2 candle. And people are going to be like so disappointed when that finally happens. But that's what a no normal market is. And I was, I was joking around uh, with one of our guys today. I think it was David. You start hearing abnormal things with exaggerated markets. So, for example, I hear people now talk about it all the time. Dan, I'm running out of buying power. That's not a normal thing. That's a good thing, right? That's an absolutely great thing. And cheers 
uh, to all you guys that I've had the same conversation with, but that's not a normal thing. You don't run out of buying power in a normal market. And that's the exaggeration point. That is it, it really the epitome of what a euphoric market is. But hey, how can you not love it, right? I mean, I guess unless you're shorting the market uh, all the way up, I get it. But how can you not love it? So, you know, look, it's the same plan going into every single day. Take the stock that is coming out of a range. Take the stock with the option flow. Take the stock that's coming out of either a bottom range or a tight middle range after the consolidation. Get long above the channel, and hopefully the options market will bail you out. And that's exactly what we saw uh, going into uh, today's trading day. I woke up like 4.30 in the morning. Uh, Amazon was up nearly three. Of course you make sales. That's the whole point, guys. And, and you, you hear these questions all the time. And I get a lot of you guys are still brand new. If you're taking the risk overnight, you don't need to, you know, you don't need to sit there to, to wait till the open to sell your stock, right? I get it. Some of you guys are trading on the option side, but you could short sell the underlining security to kind of start pairing you out in gains. But that's the whole point. When you get a gap up, if you're taking on the necessary risk to, 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 to take a stock that has a potential overnight gap up, you sell that gap up, right? You keep a runner and you let the runner do the heavy lifting for you. If the runner keeps on going in the next couple of days, God bless. If the market if the market stops out your runner at your break even point, you did your job. Your your either supposed to get stopped out or your stock's supposed to get measured potential. But either way, you did your job. In this type of environment, when you get you know when you wake up and I got three dollars on Amazon and I got a dollar seventy on Intel, I'm like yo, it's it's phenomenal. It's absolutely phenomenal. And you take your money, use break even as you stop and start looking for other uh, opportunities. So going into tomorrow, I mean, look at the indexes, right? Uh, again, you might get one more stretch into this 366 level, probably run into a little bit of supply on the queues. Uh, again, it's so hard to find value up here, but that's our job, right? We talk about this all the time. That is our absolute job uh, going into every single trading day. The IWM, uh, since the breakout, uh, since the breakout above uh, 182 that we talked about, uh, which was an awesome, awesome move. Hey, look at this thing. This thing went from 182 to basically 189 in five sessions. That's a very, very good, healthy market. You look at the SPYs, uh, again, just an orbit. You know, somebody asked me, well, where's the next, you know, where's the next uh, supply for this thing? I said, look up. <laughs> and I'm mean, obviously joking around, but look up. It's just, it's the sky. I mean, these stocks are just absolutely in orbit. And the problem is eventually the, the, the music will stop. And the question is, are you going to have a plan, a contingency plan uh, to make sure that you have a seat, right? That you have a chair for the musical chair game. Uh, again, I know it feels great. It's wonderful, especially if you're a brand new trader in this type of environment and you're catching your first wave. But I give you as I, I, I tell you on my children, this is will end one day, whether it's tomorrow, whether it's three weeks from now, maybe it maybe two years from now, who knows? But eventually, again, you always have to put yourself in a position that you're buying on the first floor. Again, if you're a brand new viewer uh, into this channel, buying from the first floor versus buying from the 12th floor. On the first floor, you're buying out of a tight range that consolidated for at least two, three weeks, maybe a couple of months. And if you fail, you fail for pennies. If you're buying it up here, right? If your first trade tomorrow is the SPY up here after a run-up, right? After this whole big run-up here, you're doing it wrong. You're jumping out of the 12th floor. And again, maybe you survive. Again, heard the, tell me if you heard this before. Maybe you survive, maybe you don't. But the point is, why jump off the 12th floor when you're still having some value or at least a good amount of value, still stocks coming out of the bottom uh, in the middle of the ranges? This market got so good. Just to give you an idea, AMC, right, was a cult classic. You guys remember all AMC, right? It's going to 3,000, it's going to 12,000, it's going to a million, it's going to 8 million. I'm not selling it before it goes to $38,000. It's a $5 stock. Let's all relax, right? It's a $5 stock. But even this salt of the earth, right? This thing challenged the 50-day moving average. We saw 550 weekly calls coming in this thing. If this crap catches momentum, and I say crap in the nicest way, I know you guys, <laughs> some of you guys are attached to this. I don't know why, but okay, right? If this crap starts going and starts confirming the 50-day moving average, and again, I would never even, even remotely suggest even looking at this thing for a trade when there's other stocks breathing and walking the earth. But if my point is, if this stock starts confirming the 50-day moving average, it really does show you how great and aggressive the speculation money flow uh, is in this market and continues to be. So you guys remember a couple of days ago, I was looking for that blow-off trade, this setup, right? I'm not sure Tesla, guys. The blow-off setup. Hell, this thing, this thing just looks as going to 300, right? What am I, crazy? Looking for a blow-off top, right? Again, blow-off top usually means it's going to take out the previous day's low. I've been waiting for this previous day low for three days, and literally the last three days are the only times I've not traded Tesla in this whole run-up uh, on this move up. But hey, this thing looks like uh, you know, they're coming for the, 
for the 265, 270 weeklies. I, this thing is just out of out of its mind. And obviously, because of the euphoria, you know, uh, I'm, I'm gonna miss I'm gonna miss the next move. But you know what? It's okay. It's okay. Uh, Nvidia keeps on just going out of its mind as well. Uh, we talked about Nvidia last night. Uh, repeat buyers, guys, and we'll get to the uh, to the, some option flow in a second. But we'll start with Nvidia. Massive 420 calls is coming in. 420 weeklies, 420 weeklies. We started talking about the video yesterday, uh, getting above this range here. It stood above this range, and now it looks like uh, you know they, there's a shot. This thing starts testing the 420 uh, top of the range highs from the highest from May the 30th. Again, the relentless buying today of the weekly uh, 420 calls. Here's some names that had massive option flow, guys. Uh, AI. We had an incredible pivot on AI. Okay, when I mean incredible pivot. You see this move? Yeah, I think that's a that's a call for incredible. When the stock was at 38 and a half, they started coming nonstop for the 44 weeklies. Nonstop, one after another and after another. And once the stock took out this 39.40, again, we'll get to the pivots in a second, this thing was just an absolute monster, exploded. Uh, look at a name, for example, like Rivian, right? We've been talking about Rivian. Rivian finally woke up today, right? Woke up today. Again, they can constantly coming for the 17 and a half uh, July calls. All it just needs to do is just take out one more channel. You see this whole channel here going back to April? If it could just get above this channel here, why not? Why can't this thing go uh, to 16 bucks? Uh, Intel, I still have a runner, small runner on Intel. Again, the highest close uh, in this whole formation here. Um, AI, we talked about letter U, right? Letter U as well. Again, another name uh, that woke up today. It's got rejected off the top of the range here, but keep an eye on letter U. They were coming for the 40 and a half weeklies, the 41 weeklies. If this thing could just get above this channel here in the next couple of days, who knows? Maybe this thing uh, wakes up as well. Other than that, uh, Apple uh, got a downgrade today, you know, really only down 50 cents. AI, uh, AMD had its uh, had its uh, AI day today. Again, this is kind of my whole point. When you have big, big run-ups and you're still constantly buying stock, buying stock, even regardless if there's an event or not, they're going to sell the stock off. Again, this is a perfect example of buying stock on the 12th floor. You don't need it. Here was the breakout. Here was the breakout. Here is the continuation. This is just all ridiculous. And again, I'm not saying AMD can't go higher than near future, but my point is if you're buying a stock 30 points away from its breakout level, there's always a higher probability that it will come back harder uh, than the point of reference than it originally did. So you got to be very, very uh, careful for that. So again, our goal for tomorrow, look for tight channels, right? Really tight channels. Let me give you guys uh, some ideas uh, for tomorrow, and then we'll get to the pivots really quickly. Uh, let me give you guys some pivot. Look, look at Marvel. Okay, Marvel had a really nice quarter. Again, Semiconductor has been super duper hot. Had a really nice quarter. It came in. If Marvel could just get above this channel here. You see this high here on June the 7th? If it could just start getting above this June 7th candle here, this thing could wake up. Keep an eye on this thing. BBIO, another name I'm not really familiar with. But honestly, what do you need to be familiar with? Look at this. Look at this, how long this distribution channel is. It's going back to April, right? And if it can get above this distribution channel, this BBIO uh, can wake up as well. So keep an eye on that. Uh, obviously, we're still watching uh, you. Really good looking channel there. I'm watching for Rivian uh, for a second day play there as well. Obviously, look, I, I, if Tesla gives us a light volume open, a light volume open. I'm not talking about starts imploding. I'm talking about light volume open into rising support and it holds. Yeah, I mean, listen, it's, it's worth a shot for a bounce. In the video as well but the last thing i want to do is just keep on chasing these prices chasing these prices my last sale my last sale on tesla three days ago was in the 40s the stock right now is a 260. it's mentally mentally i can't buy and i know it's going higher it, it, you know it's telling me you know it's telling me now for the last three days since i'm waiting for a backside te a, a test which is not coming it's telling me it's going high the options market is going higher i just can't mentally wrap my head around buying the stock up 14 days in a row uh, the same stock that I just sold three days ago, $18 lower, which is uh, out of its mind. But God bless. If you're still riding this thing, uh, great, great job. I mean, absolutely uh, great job. So let's talk about the pivots today. Uh, again, my first thing, this was like at 5 o'clock in the morning. Guys, sell 90% of your Amazon, Intel, or anything else that you have. Uh, biggest challenge today is finding, you know, finding the value for the rest of the day. We found the value. Uh, we found the value. It got really aggressive very, very quickly. Uh, Chewy, 39, uh, needs to build. 
here was Chewy. We I think we talked about Chewy last night on the video. Uh, Chewy finally got above this channel here. You know, ran up about a buck. Nice move there. Still looks uh, higher. Uh, Apple, if it shakes off the downgrade, it needs to be 184. It got rejected at 184. I, I wasn't even watching Apple. Uh, GTLB, 49.80. I wasn't watching GTLB either. Uh, 49.80. Let's see. Oh, yeah. It broke out. Yeah, 49.80. It got above the 49.80, went to a 51. If you if you if you took this as a trade, I didn't. Uh, but good job, good job. Not something I really trade here. Uh, Rivian, a nice little pop here. 14.90.15 needs to build. Here was Rivian again. Those 17.50 call buyers continue to come in. Uh, popped into the 15 into the 15.40s. Now it just needs to get above this channel here to see uh, north of 16. Uh, letter U went nuts. Uh, 17, uh, 37, 90, 38 needs to build again. 41 weekly is coming in, uh, 38 went, you know, took out this whole 38 channel here, uh, got rejected at the 39 50 level. This is where it needs to reclaim, uh, to go higher. Uh, you know, like a, here we go. 39 forties on deck from 38. This was definitely the move of the day. Um, I caught this thing for about a dollar, $60, 70 in a matter of minutes. And oh, by the way, this thing went up another five, right? A 3940 rejected three times needs to build. Uh, AI was just great. Uh, AI was great. So here's the 3940. See these two candles here? The high here on June the 7th was 3940. The high from June the 9th was 3940. So once it got above the 3940, this damn thing went to 46. It's an absolute amazing, amazing move on AI. I go 42 on deck, try 46 on deck. Uh, later, Rivian 1530's next supply, which it absolutely went, and I believe that is it. So that's it, guys. That's it. Uh, market continues uh, to go nuts. Again, guys, remember, uh, the, eventually the music will stop. It, that's a fact, okay? It's happened to me uh, during the internet craze, during the bottoming effect of 2009, and it happened to me in 2020. Eventually, you're going to run into a euphoric uh, solid wall and unfortunately, most traders won't realize it and they'll give back three months worth of gains within a couple of days. We don't want that to happen. Always trade with confidence, always trade with conviction, but always trade responsible. Guys, God bless everybody. Stay blessed, stay happy, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, everybody.